Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Francois Sabot. I'm a researcher working at the French National Institute for Sustainable Development, R&D, in France, at Montpellier. And I will present to you our work in the team, uh, working on the pan genome for rice and the way we use the long reads, nanopore long reads for the rice uh, pan genome. So what is first, what is pan genome? What are we working on? The pan genome idea is that between two individuals, we have differences, not only in terms of SNPs, but also in terms of regions and of sequences. It means that between two individuals, you may have duplication, different gene, horizontal transfer, and things like this. For instance, in maize, Morgan et al. in 2007 proposed that only 50% of the genome of maize is shared between two varieties of maize. The shared part is called the core genome, which is which belongs to all individuals and the species. And the non-shared part is called the dispensable genome or the ecogenome, which is probably uh, in charge of the um, adaptation, local adaptation. The pan genome itself is made of the addition of the core and of the dispensable genome. And uh, the ratio between core and pan is a matrix for the adaptability of a species. The better is the the higher is the ratio, the better is the adaptability probably. And in addition, a pan genome can be open or closed. An open pan genome means that the more individual you add, the more uh, new sequence you will find. At a point, the pan genome will become closed. That means that you don't have new variation that arise when you add a new individual. We are working on rice. So why are you working on rice? You can say rice. Is the first main is the first human food. Every day, 20% of the uh, humanity counts on rice to be uh, to to eat. And in the rice, the Oryza genus, there is 21 species in which we have two domesticated one. The first one is the Asian rice that you can see here. It's the classical rice that you will eat all together uh, all every day. It's Oryza sativa, and it has been uh, domesticated from Oryza rufipogon. The second one is the African rice here, Oriza glaberima, which has been domesticated in West Africa from the wild Oriza barthai. For each of the two species, um, there is a small divergence of less than 1 million years. They have still the same genomic structure, 12 chromosomes, approximately 3,500 uh, uh, megabase of the genome, and they are 99.5% homozygous. And for rice, as a, as a model in uh, the cereals, there is plenty of reference genome. For instance, there is tw uh, 13 reference genome at the chromosome scale and multiple drafts at different level of quality. And for the um, African rice, there is one chromosome level, the uh, version two of the OMAP uh, genome currently, and five or six drafts of genome that exist. In addition to those genomes, there are plenty of short reads data that exist. For instance, the 3000 genome project for rice, for Asian rice. Here you have a picture of the phylogeny based on this data. And in our team, for instance, with the origin project, we have produced more than 300 sequences, um, Illumina sequences for those ones. So we have plenty, we had plenty of those short reads and we decided to go through the pan genome of this rice. So how do we, how the, do, we do with the short reads? We use an approach that we are developing in a tool which is called uh, Frangipan. And the idea is that we map on the reference genome, then we extract the reads that are not mapped, then we reassemble those sh short reads in context, and then we encore in the reference to see where they are. The main problem is that this is short reads. And as a short reads, we have short context, and we can encore only a third, 31.5% of those sequence in clusters, of those clusters in the sequence, sorry. Then we decide to compare we have an assembly that we start to, uh, to have two years ago on another cultivar of uh, the African rice, TOG 5681, and we compare the sequence that we reassemble from the Illumina to this reference. And we found that while we can anchor only a third of those sequence in another reference genome, directly on this long read reference, we can anchor 100% almost of those sequences. So we need those long read reference to work on the pan genome. So we know, need those long reads. So we create a new experimental design for that. It's what we call the 12 plus 12 rice project. We worked on 12 Asian rice and 12 African rice. We are still working on, but I will explain you how we do that. First thing is that we prepare high molecular weight DNA extraction. We use a CTAP-based method, really standard one, but we just optimize 
uh, some steps, especially the pipetting to be very slow and very uh, careful with the DNA. And we control at the end the QC with a pulse field agarose gel, just to be sure that we have high molecular weight DNA. Then we use a standard LSK 109 kit for sequencing on one flow cell per sample. We add also on the set the short read aminator kit from uh, Circulomics. We use two MK1C. We called the data with um, GUP version 4 and plus. And then we obtain for each sample from 23 to 41x of data. And we have N50 of read from 80 to 29 KB. And we have a median of the read size from 1.8 KB to more than 23 KB. I will come back on this later. Then we assemble those tools, those uh, data with different tools using our pipeline Coolebrance, which allow you to uh, parallelize a lot of assembly in the same time. We test different assembler, different polisher, and different QC control. And finally, what we are doing for the moment is to scaffold those uh, contigs in chromosome and to transpose the annotation and to find the variation. Let me present to you some results. And to make a long story short, we test multiple assemblers, Fly, Raven, Smart De Novo, Shasta, and Mini SM, different polisher with different condition of the polisher, and we use different metrics. But what we learn is that for Rice, the best assembler is Fly. Fly will produce a lot of contigs, but in fact, when you check those contigs, there is a huge bunch of very small ones and very truly large ones that allow you to have very good uh, contiguity of assembly. Then we test different assembler and we conserve the couple Racon free turn plus Medaka to have a highly quali high quality assembly, very, very high Busco score because we have a Busco, so a, met uh, con um, a gene space conserve at 97.7%. That means that we have a huge level of quality. And after we compute the N50 of our contigs, we have some um, half of the genome which is covered with contigs that are from 12, 12 to 17 megabase, depending on the assembly. And we have between seven, in fact, not nine, but this morning we have the result for seven, up to 13 contigs that cover half of the genome. That means that sometimes we have contigs that are chromosome scale directly. We do not have any contamination. We check using Illumina. This is the only steps where I use the Illumina data to check the contamination. And we can remap almost 100% of the Illumina data coming from the same DNA tube on our assemblies. And finally, what we are doing is that we compare at a global scale to the reference our samples. And to a lower scale, we are integrating and finding all the deletion and insertion and structural variation that we have in the genome. We have done this for the moment for more than 20 genomes. And we have different, uh, we learn different things on that. And my take up message will be that the longer the read you have, the better are the contiguity that you will obtain at the end of your assembly. The short read eliminator kit is really powerful to remove those short reads and it will increase the median of the reads, which is an important parameter for the contiguity. Indeed, everyone is looking to N50, but what we found is that the N50 of reads is important, but the median of the reads is also really important to obtain a good contiguity in the assembly. And what is important is to test multiple configuration between your assembler and your polisher. Other things, having a lot of contigs does not mean a bad assembly. You may have plenty of contigs, but they can be, uh, they can be for two thirds very short contigs that will not give you any more information to the assembly and very long contigs that will give you 99% of the assembly. We also always use two assemblers. Why always, even if one is always the one that we choose, we select always another assembler just to check if we have any trouble in the, in the structure to compare to the other assembler to know if the structure is, uh, this anomaly, anomaly is a problem of the assembler or a true biological uh, variation. We, will, we still use Illumina, but only for control. And we can have high quality assemblies within days because, because in three days, we can have an assembly from base calling to the context. And long reads are much, much better than short reads to identifying variation. So what we will do next. So first we'll lift the annotation using lift off. In 15 minutes, it will be okay. Then we'll integrate all those data and all those new genomes in the right genome hub that we are developing in the lab. We'll also create a pan-genome graph using mini graph of the Asian and of the African uh, genome. And we will use another tool that we developed in the lab, which is Biograph, to have a linearized, a linearized version sorry, 
of this graph uh, to allow its uh, visualization in tools such as Panache that we are still developing in the lab. All this work has been made by lab and by informatics, and I would like to thank all our collaborators in the lab at DIAD, in ITROP, South Green, and N2P, but also our international collaborator with IRI, Afri Afri Africa Rice, sorry, CA and Genoscope, and especially the Arizona Genome Institute for their providing of the uh, reference genome for African rice. Thank you for your attention.